All right, hello, wine drinking people. Always nice to see um, um, some friends that we've known and for a long time in the wine business and uh, Musella, a winery that we followed rather closely. They lost their distributor and um, it's good to see they've landed with Luigi Vinaio Capresi, a man who's very passionate about Italian wines. And uh, since we've seen them last, they've converted to biodynamic and they've also been experimenting with um, concrete eggs and marble. I've never heard of anybody using marble to age their wine in. Very unique, and uh, they follow more of a Burgundian kind of uh, model to produce their wines. They've got 50 hectares of vines, 30 their own, and 20 that they've rented. And uh, this Valpolicella Superior, a classic little Valpolicella, three glasses of the Gambaro, so I think the last two years. And it's a blend of Corvina, Corvinona, Rodinella, and Barbera. A little Barbera in Verona, I guess. All right, very light and fresh, pretty floral notes, nice red berry, juicy red berry fruit, and uh, fine silky tannins, nice freshness in this wine, 13% alcohol, a really easy wine to drink the whole entire bottle of it. $22, then the Musella Valpolicella Rapasso Superiore, a more elegant style of Rapasso, only 13.5% alcohol, and kicks the alcohol up 0.5%. Uh, a little more richness. This wine has a very similar bouquet, maybe a hint of dried meat and cocoa there to the red berry fruit and floral quality, that tangy red berry fruit on the tongue. A nice amount of minerality in this wine, that red clay. You really notice smooth tannins, a great vintage 2013. Uh, not so good in 2014. Um, very difficult. And uh, they only produced one Amarone uh, in that vintage. And uh, had two months of continuous rain. Wow. So 14, we didn't have any, but we were talking about the vintages as we tasted through the wine. 2010, a most excellent vintage. More Corvinone and Corvin, Corvina, Corvinone and Corvina in the Amarone than in the Valpolicella. A little bit of a peppery kind of spice to the earth and a less explosive fruit. Not, not a big sweet style of Amarone, a little more balanced style. And uh, this wine has got a small amount of Ocelletta in it. And dark cherry liqueur-like fruit on the nose, hints of cocoa, that distinct clay-like minerality you get on the nose from Amarone, and some dried floral notes. Very smooth and round on the tongue. This wine is big, but shows excellent freshness and balance at 15.5% alcohol. Those pretty floral notes and that textbook minerality lasting through the finish. Most excellent juice. That's what we had to drink with our friends from Musella Winery. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.